Our world today is a world that has a big thing to say about connection. When you do, when you do your work, you look to see if the Wi-Fi is connected. If the Wi-Fi is not connected, you ain't going to get nothing done on that. Connection is a big part of life. And when we think about connections, we should understand something. We need to be connected to God. What does that mean, being connected to God? It's one thing to say, well, I go to church, I, I, I pray, I, I do this and I do that. But we can't do it out of a sense of religion. We have to do it out of a sense of love. Did you hear that last song we just sang? Oh my goodness. Whew. I feel a connection to God in that, that last song that was just so amazing. Why? Why? Because listen, when we are connected to God, it's not only because we know Him. You know, you know, you know people in your family, right? Your wife, your husband, your mother, your father. Your brothers, your sisters, you know them. You have a connection with them. And when you see them, you're glad you see them because you care about them. And you want that fellowship, that relationship, and that connection. Oh, by the way, not only, not only do I have family here, but my sister's here today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we need to understand connection. When somebody says, you know, I had a lady, I had a lady in Proctorville that I was witnessing too many years ago, and she had never been to church, and she was near 80. And she asked me, what are they going to do in that church? And I remember, what are they going to do in that church? That's a good question. Well, we're going to sing songs. We're going to lift our voices to God. We're going to listen to the pastor preach from God's word. Then what are they going to do? Then what are they going to do? Then what are they going to do? And I remember the day that she came into church. She sat in the back row, just like this. I remember the fear in her face because she didn't have a connection with God. And she didn't have a connection with church. And you know, we have to understand something. Our world today is talking all about being connected. But the most important connection is being connected to God. Are we, being, are we connected to God? I mean, when it's Sunday morning, is it time to go to church out of a sense of I have to be there? Not because I'm on staff. Not because it's Sunday, but because that's where I'm going to be connecting with my church family and my God. This is a family place. The crossing is a family. This is where we identify with each other. And it should bother us when we can't be here. It's so important that we understand that concept we exist to connect you to God, to others, and to your purpose. We have a threefold mission statement. We want to think about the first aspect this morning, being connected to God. Now, I want to turn to a very familiar passage. Don't worry, brother. I brought my own Bible this morning. <laughs> so you can keep your Bible during the whole time. Um, I want you to turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16. Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16. You know, when I read this passage, it's always positive when we read this. And it should be. But Jesus was trying to see, I believe, whether his disciples were connected to him and whether the community was connected to him. And you know, where do you start? You start with the people that you care about, right? You start with the people that you love. 
You, th you start with the people that you are connected to. You start with the people that you are pouring yourself into. And as a Christian, in this day we're living in, we've got to be connected to God. We've got to be connected to others. And we've got to be connected to our purpose. Because the world is watching. And we might be the only Bible that they ever read. We might be the only connection to God that they see. And are we giving out a good connection to God? Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to start reading in verse 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, here's the question He asked His disciples, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Well, that's a good question. Who do people say that I am? You know, whenever you are talking to somebody about Jesus, you are talking to them about the most important discussion you can ever have with anyone. Because knowing Jesus and being connected to Jesus is the difference between eternity in heaven and eternity in hell. It's a very serious matter. You know, we can talk about everything in the world. We could talk about cast iron pots and pans and skillets. That's a pretty cool subject, by the way. We could talk about camping. That's a good subject. We could talk about work. That's a good subject. But the most important discussion is understanding are we connected to God? Have you ever have you ever went to someone in church and had a conversation with them? Let me tell you what the Lord has done for me this week. And you're excited about it. We, we have to remember, as a Christian, when we, when we are fellowshipping with other Christians, I want you to think of a triangle. At the very top of that triangle, write God. At the very bottom of the corner of the triangle, write me. At the other end of the triangle, write brother, sister, in Christ. We call this the triangle of fellowship, meaning that God is here and I am here and me and God are connected and we are having fellowship. At the same time, my brother and my sister on this end of the triangle, they're connected to God and so God and them is having fellowship. And then at the bottom of the triangle, me and my brother and sister in, in Christ we are connected and we are having fellowship. It's the perfect relationship and fellowship and connection. But if you ever go to someone, a fellow believer, and you say, let me tell you what God has done this week. And they're like, oh boy. They don't say nothing, but in their, in, they're, 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 they're waiting till you leave. Why is that? Have you ever had that experience where you went up to somebody and you're excited about what God's done this week and you could just tell on their face that they're not real excited like you are? And you, and you got to wonder, is something going on on this side of the triangle? Because if this side is good and this side is good, this side should be good. But sometimes, sometimes one or the other will get off. Maybe we've been too busy. Maybe we've not been spending time in God's Word. Maybe we've not been seeking Him in prayer. Maybe we've not been in church like we should. Maybe we are distracted instead of being connected. And then when somebody comes and they're excited about what Jesus has done this past week in their life and somebody else has not been close, there might be a little bit of a disconnection of uncomfort there. It's kind of like the man who, who had been missing church pastor went out to see him and he said, oh, pastor, I, I know I've not been in service, he said, but I've been out on visitation. Well, that's great. That's great. I hope you make it next Sunday. 
Next Sunday, he didn't come. The next Sunday, he didn't come. Then the pastor went and saw him again. He said, brother, he said, I, pastor, I've been out on visitation. The pastor starts scratching his head. Every Sunday morning, he's out on visitation. And as the pastor walks out of the house, he looks right beside the garage. You see, he hears water dripping, and he sees a boat sitting there, and the back of the boat said, Visitation. Sometimes our focus can be a little bit off. Sometimes we can say something that seems to be good, but in practicality, hey, I'm going to call my, my boat visitation, but I'm out on the water. I want you to think with me. How important is it to be connected? Jesus asked his disciples this question. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who are they saying that I am? L look at the responses. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others uh, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Listen, when, when people are talking to you about Jesus, who is Jesus to them? You know, one thing, whenever you are witnessing to someone, you've got to find out what they're trusting in. You've also got to understand who they, look, who they think Jesus is. So whenever I talk to someone, I always try to say, maybe I get this from share Jesus without fear. To you, who is Jesus? Let them respond. They may say, oh man, he's a, he's a good teacher. Oh, he was a good man. Well, you know, he was, he was the one that started that religion. Well, you know, he is... Um, the Son of God. <laughs> he is my Savior. You see, there's different responses people can give you. Jesus and having a connection with Jesus is very critical. Because after Jesus asked the, asked the question, who do men say that I am? Then he turns it around and he says, but who do you say that I am? You know, that's, that's a real, it gets real personal now. Who do they say that I am? Who do you say I am? You, you know, when we come to church and we serve the Lord, we have to understand, are we connected to God through Jesus? That's the only way you're going to be connected to God is through Jesus. There is no other way. To get to God except you come through Jesus. You can't come through, uh, through Jesus and uh, through this or, well, uh, uh, I'm a member of the church. I'm good. I've been baptized. I'm good. I go out on visitation. I'm good. I teach a Sunday school class. I'm good. No, you're not. You might be, you might think those are, and, and you know, none of those things are bad things. Those are all important, but the most important thing is Jesus. That's why we're here. That's why we are on our way to heaven. It's because we are connected to God through Jesus Christ. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved, the Bible says. And Jesus, Jesus told his followers, he said, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except through me. The most important thing we can think about today is are we connected to God through Jesus Christ? Because if we are not connected to God through Jesus Christ, then we're missing something. We're missing something. And so the disciples are asked the question, who are they saying I am? And then he gets personal and says, who do you say I am? You know, this is a very important topic because this is where a lot of churches will be divided. Because some will take this Matthew 16 passage and they will say, well, that's when the church started, Matthew 16. There's, and then uh, 
this phraseology between Jesus and Peter, some will say, well, the church started with Peter because Matthew 16. So we've got to have Matthew 16 down right. We've got to understand what he's saying. And first he starts off with being connected to people in the community and who do they say Jesus is. And then to his disciples, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter said that. Bartholomew didn't say that. John didn't say that. Matthew didn't say that. Philip didn't say that. None of them said that, but Peter said that. And, and you know, I think to myself, and you know, we, we realize that Peter is the bold disciple, and he would speak up, and he would say, but Jesus reminds the disciples in this conversation that Peter didn't just come up with this and say it. This was a divine revelation. It shows us that Peter was connected to God through Jesus Christ. Because this important fact was revealed to him from the Father in heaven. Because look what Jesus says in the 17th verse. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So before we start downplaying Peter, we got to remember right here, he got it right. Now later in this same chapter, he's going to get it wrong again. But right here, he's got it right. Being connected to God is so critical in this day we live in because people are looking for something real and genuine. And Jesus says, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. This revelation did not come from flesh and blood, but my Father in heaven. In fact, Jesus said, you are blessed for saying it. You're blessed. You know, Simon, Simon is one of those words that means to hearken or to listen and hear. But right here, Jesus as he shares this, we're reminded here that in verse 16, as Matthew is pinning this, he refers to him as Simon Peter. And in fact, uh, Peter means rock. In fact, um, Jesus here will use a little play on words. Let's pick it up in verse 18. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, or hell, shall not prevail against it. Why is that statement so important? Because that statement is the one that, that some churches will decide where they stand on this issue. I mean, there are some churches that will look to Peter as the founder of the church, and also... He, it's very critical that everything be Peter-oriented. But I want you to see something. You, you don't see this in English, but you see this in Greek. When, G, when Jesus says here in verse 18, when he says, I also say that you are Peter. Peter here, and then he uses a similar word when he uses an on this rock. Peter and rock. You see those two words in that verse? Peter and rock. Well, the word Peter is the Greek word petros, where we get our English word Peter, and it means rock and rock man. It's a, it is in the masculine tense. You are Peter. But then he uses the feminine word for rock when he uses the word rock. You are Peter, Petros, rock man, stone. And on this rock, this word rock is the feminine tense of the word. 
It's the word Petra. It's feminine for rock. And whether God's like to hear this or not, the church is in the feminine tense. And the church did not start with Peter. It started with the statement of Peter. The statement of Peter came directly from the Father, Jesus says. And you are Peter, masculine, rock man. And on this rock, this stone, I will build my church. Now, this word rock means a large mass of rock, a ledge. It's, it's the idea of rock or a cliff being a symbol. So, you know, understand this. We are connected to God through Jesus. We are connected to God through His church. This is a place where we meet because we are connected to God. And this is a place where we connect to God. He said, I will build my ecclesia, is the Greek word, my church. It means a called out assembly. We're not just a social club here at the crossing. We are an ecclesia. We are a called out assembly. We meet in his name. And look what, look what Jesus says here. He says, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. That's the first part of being connected to God. It's, we have to understand that it starts with Jesus. You know, I spent 15 years in a false religion. And I really didn't understand really who Jesus was for the longest time. And whenever I realized who Jesus really was, that he wasn't some added God to the Godhead, he wasn't some secondary person, he wasn't just a physical person that was born and that he didn't resurrect from the dead by a gas form, that he was physically raised and he was talking to the wedding of Cana, remember John, and he said, he was talking about his, he said, destroy this temple and I will build it in three days. And he was talking about his, there's the word, soma, physical body, not gas. The Bible. The Bible is the roadmap. Jesus is the foundation for 1 Corinthians 3, tells us in verse 11, for no other foundation can anyone lay than it is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the foundation for the church. If we are connected to God, we're going to be connected to God through Jesus Christ. That's the first part. Listen, when we are connected to God through Jesus Christ, we can understand truly, you can, you can find out how important is God in your life? How important, what does God mean to you? As, as, a, as, a, as a husband and a father and as a preacher, that's got to be the thing that we get right. And you know what? We're all going to mess up. We're all going to fail. We've got, listen, we've got, we got people that's looking to us. We've got we've to make sure that we understand the connection to Jesus, right? Because Peter here, the statement that he makes was critical to the church that starts because let's look at the second part of this. It's in verse 19. He said, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Jesus tells Peter, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. What do what keys do? Keys unlock opportunities. You can't get into those opportunities unless you're connected to God. But Peter here got this Right, And when he got this right, Jesus said, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Here's the critical thing to remember. When you go through the book of Acts, the gospel is not unlocked to anyone as far as the people groups 
in the witness aspect of Acts 1-8 until Peter comes. Remember on the day of Pentecost had fully come and everybody thought, well, these, these are drunk. And who, guess who? Guess who was there? Guess who started to speak? And guess who was there? And as he spoke, the uh, gospel was unlocked. It was Peter. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Remember when Cornelius was seeking the Lord in the 10th chapter? Remember that? And remember that Peter was, he was up on the roof. And remember the Bible says that he was in a trance. And remember the Lord showed him these dreams. And he didn't fully understand what those dreams meant. But the Lord was reminding him that he was getting ready to go on mission. And so Cornelius had men come and they fetched Peter. And Peter went, he went to Cornelius' house and Cornelius had gotten already, he'd got his family all there. And what happened? The gospel was unlocked to the Gentiles. Why? Because Peter was, Peter was given the keys to the kingdom, and whatever he bound on earth was bound in heaven, whatever he loosed on earth was loosed in heaven, and the gospel was unlocked to the world because he made this critical statement in being connected to God and being connected to others. Listen. We have to understand something. What is it that God wants to do in our lives? What is His purpose? That comes later. But first, we've got to understand, are we connected to God? And are we connecting others to God? Do we, have this, do we have understand the critical aspect that it starts with me and God? That's where it starts. Well, you know, you've got so-and-so, or you've got this group. Listen. Listen. We're talking about, I'm talking about me and I'm talking about my God through Jesus Christ. If we get Jesus Christ right, our life will be right. If we get Jesus Christ wrong, our life will never be right. So this morning, I want to ask you the question. Are you connected to God? And are you connecting your family to God? Is Jesus mean so much to you that you just can't divide the time? When it's time to get focused on Jesus, when it's time to serve Him, when it's time to worship, are we connected to Him and saying, I don't care what's going on. I have to set an example for my God. I have to be, listen, He, what if, listen, he died on the cross for my sins. And what if, what if He is not my connected Focus today. Maybe I'm just not connected to God like I should be. Then it's time to get reconnected. It's time to check that Wi-Fi connection between you and God, between me and God, and between me and my brother and my sister in Christ. If we are connected to God through Jesus Christ, and when somebody says to you, maybe somebody's going to come up to you this week and they're going to say, uh, to you, who is Jesus? Who do you think Jesus is? You ever had somebody ask you that question? Oh, I know you go to that church up in Proctorville, uh, but who is Jesus to you? What is he? Who is he? What are you going to say then? Man, he's a cool dude. He's cooler than Fonzarelli. I, I mean, you know, there's all kinds of things you can say, but listen, there's nobody you can compare Jesus to. No one. No one. Not your pastor. Not your church, not your denomination, nothing. It's Jesus. And then everything else. Jesus in Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these needs will be supplied for you. He's got to be first. If you put Jesus first, guess what? He's going to take care of your needs. He's going to take care of your family. But if He's not the first place, don't expect Him to bless You've got to get that connection to God right. It's got to be right. It's got to be first. Jesus does not like to be shared with anything else. First. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Because if we get God right, then our life will be right. But if we get God wrong, our life will be wrong. And so somebody may say, am I really connected to God today? You may ask yourself that question. I'm going to ask myself that question. Am I really connected to God through Jesus? 
Is he my passion? Is he why I get up in the morning? Because one day life is going to be over. That's it. There's going to be no more chances to get Jesus right. We have to get connected to Jesus. We've got to get connected to God and stay there. The world wants to sway you to the right or to the left. Satan wants to distract you to the right or to the left. But listen, you've got to get it right. You've got to keep Jesus right because you never know what opportunities God may bring. Come on, Heath. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Help us, Lord, to be connected to you through Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray this morning, I realize this morning, Father, that not only are we connected to you through Jesus, but through your word and through your precious Holy Spirit, like Jesus said in the 14th chapter of John, I will pray the Father and he will send another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth. So Lord, you've not left us here to be orphans, but Lord, you've made a way for us to be connected to you through your son Jesus, through your spirit, through your word, through your church. Lord, help us to look at our connection today and ask the question, am I really connected to God like I should be? Am I really focused like I should be? Am I really seeking you like I should be? Am I really praying like I should be? Am I really leading like I should be? Am I making a difference like I should be? Because Lord, we know your word tells us, what is your life? It says a vapor that appears for a little while and then it's no more. And our lives is summed up in a, a birth date and a death date. That little dash sums up our life. And in that little dash, are we connected to you like we should be? Are we making a difference in our family by being connected to you like we should be? Or are we sharing that spot with something else? Help us, Lord, this morning to be connected to you like we should be. And Lord, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that's here this morning and they're, they're Lord, they're saying, you know what? I'm just not sure I've ever been connected to God. I need to get this right now. If that's you, I want to encourage you to come today. Or maybe you're here this morning and you say, Preacher, I just I need to get my connection close to God like it once was. Help me to get reconnected. I want to encourage you to come. Father, we love you. We praise you. Minister to your people as we sing. If there's anyone that needs to do business with you, draw them to an altar of prayer. Jesus. You can be seated. I'd like to take a moment to remind you you can give online or through the app and thank those who already have. Uh, we're going to continue taking up tithes and offerings by using the bucket on your way out, so please feel free to do so. And uh, personal announcements, uh, no longer work at Lowe's. Uh, I've shifted <laughs> to... Uh, uh, working at the pharmacy booth over in uh, the Route 60 Walmart, which has been really funny because Amanda's pointed out I have no problem transitioning between jobs, and she is terrified to leave hers. Um, but uh, this morning got me thinking, the reason I move around jobs so much is just because I, I keep looking for better. <laughs> um, but it occurred to me this morning as I was talking to Will, I, I actually have a, had a, have a problem because as Will and I were talking this morning, it occurred to me the reason I keep getting wanting better jobs is just because I want to feel secure you know, I want in finances. I want to feel like if the car blows up randomly or whatever, not that that ever happens, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that, that I can take care of myself. And I'm, I'm going to brag on you a little bit. I'm sorry. You don't do it, so somebody has to because you deserve to be bragged on. Uh, <laughs> he pointed out that that's just not trusting God. That's, that's trusting money. So I, I, I have a confession to make. I, I admit I have trusted money before I've trusted God. I've made that more important. And I apologize for that. And I hope you're not in the same boat, but if you are, I, I, I can't stress enough how... 
how wrong I was to do that. Then I don't regret changing jobs. That's not to say that I'm very happy to <laughs> be in this new one. I think that'll work out great. God can use money. Amen. <laughs> but don't trust the money. Trust God. Because it's His breath in our lungs. I'm going to add that on too. It's all about Him. And I hope you live that way every day. And I hope I can live that way every day. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you. Thank you for an opportunity to get connected to you. Help us to continue to grow, to continue to look for ways where we're weak and failing. Help us to constantly seek after you. And God, be with us. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Okay, a few announcements today. By the way, if you need any free prescriptions, go to Walmart 60. <laughs> John will take care of you. Less favors in this job. I <laughs> uh, just want to welcome any newcomers here. Glad to have you. You just got a little connection card if you want to go ahead and fill it out and bring it to the back of church afterwards. We'll give you a free t-shirt and hopefully get a chance to know you a little bit and see how we can minister to you and your families. And let's pray and we'll end our service. Father, help us to truly keep in mind how great you truly are, Lord. Our expectations and our visions of you, Lord, fall so short. We don't have the confidence in you. We see ourselves and we think about our failings and we put them on you and we look at the failings of people we've trusted and maybe family members, parents, bosses, mentors, and we've seen them fail and somehow, Lord, we, we assume you're just like everybody else. But God, you're so much greater than anybody we've ever met, anybody we've ever trusted. You are 100% faithful, you're 100% loving, and you don't make mistakes. You're perfect in everything you do, Lord God. And we just want to praise you and lift you up. Help us to see you for the perfect holy God you are and to realize how beautiful and fortunate we are in our lives having you as our personal savior. Nothing is greater, Lord. As we live our lives, as we look around, we see so many people who don't know you. So many people in darkness, struggling for the basic things we get from you every day. Lord, give us hearts and hands and minds to reach out, to minister and to love, Lord. Because, Father, you are so awesome and so perfect. And we want to share that with others, Lord. Thank you so much for being love and to showing us what love is. But Lord God, we just pray that you be lifted up and glorified in our lives. Amen.